Imagine, if you will, that your mind is a garden. Every thought you enter and entertain, every belief you nurture, is a seed planted in this fertile soil of consciousness. And just as surely as a planted seed grows into a flower or a tree, your thoughts and beliefs grow into the circumstances of your life. Now I ask you, what seeds are you planting in this garden of your mind? Are they seeds of doubt, fear, and limitation? Or are they seeds of faith, love, and infinite possibility? For make no mistake, my dear friends, the harvest of your life will be determined by the seeds you sow in the present moment. But how, you may ask, does this process work? How does the invisible realm of thought translate into the visible realm of experience? The answer lies in the very nature of consciousness itself. You see, consciousness is the only reality. The world you perceive around you is not separate from you, but a reflection of your inner state. When you truly grasp this truth, when you internalize it not just as an intellectual concept, but as a lived experience, you will hold in your hands the key to unlocking the treasure house of the universe. For if consciousness is the only reality, and your thoughts shape your consciousness, then by controlling your thoughts, you control your reality. Let me illustrate this with a simple exercise. Close your eyes for a moment and imagine a lemon. See its vibrant yellow skin. Feel its waxy texture beneath your fingers. Now imagine cutting this lemon in half, the juice running down your hands. Bring the lemon to your lips and take a big bite. What happened? Did you not feel your mouth water? Did you not experience the tangy sensation as if you had actually bitten into a lemon? And yet there was no physical lemon. It was all in your imagination. This, my friends, is the power of focused thought. Your body responded to an imaginary stimulus as if it were real. Now extend this understanding to every aspect of your life. Just as your body responded to the imagined lemon, the universe responds to your focused thoughts and beliefs. If you consistently focus on lack, you will experience lack. If you consistently focus on abundance, you will experience abundance. But remember, it is not enough to merely think positive thoughts in a superficial manner. True transformation comes from a deeper place. It comes from assumption. You must assume the feeling of wish for wish fulfilled. You must live from the end, experiencing in your imagination the reality you desire as if it were already manifest. Let's delve deeper into this concept of assumption. When I speak of assumption, I am not referring to mere positive thinking or affirmations. I am speaking of a total transformation of your inner state. You must become in consciousness the person you wish to be in reality. Suppose you desire financial abundance. It is not enough to simply repeat affirmations about wealth. You must assume the state of wealth consciousness. How would you feel if you were already financially abundant? How would you carry yourself? What thoughts would occupy your mind? You see, the outer world is a mirror reflecting your inner assumptions. If you assume poverty, if you live in a state of lack consciousness, the outer world will faithfully reflect this back to you. But if you assume abundance, if you live from the state of wealth consciousness, the universe has no choice but to reshape itself to match your assumption. This is the law of attraction in its purest form. It is not about wishing for things to change. It is about changing yourself first in consciousness and allowing the outer world to conform to your new state of being. Now, I can hear some of you thinking, but Neville, I have tried positive thinking before and nothing changed. To this, I say you have not yet grasped the flower power of your imagination. You have not yet learned to live from the end. Living from the end means experiencing in your imagination, with all the vividness of reality, the state you desire to manifest. It means feeling the feelings, thinking the thoughts, and even performing the actions in your mind's eye as if your desire were already fulfilled. Let me give you a practical example. Suppose you desire a promotion at work. Instead of anxiously wondering if you will get the promotion or desperately affirming that you will, you must assume the last state of already having received the promotion. In your imagination, feel the satisfaction of sitting in your new office. Experience the pride as you tell your loved ones about your new position. 
feel the weight of the increased responsibility and the excitement of new challenges. Make this imaginal act so real that when you open your eyes, you are surprised to find yourself back in your current circumstances. This, my friends, is the art of living from the end. And when you master this art, you will have mastered the art of deliberate creation. For your outer world has no choice but to reshape itself to match your inner experience. But some of you may be wondering, what about action? Don't we need to take action to achieve our goals? And to this, I say, inspired action will naturally flow from your assumed state. When you truly live from the end, when you fully embody the consciousness of your desire fulfilled, you will be guided to take precisely the right actions at precisely the right time. Is the action taken from a state of lack or desperation is rarely effective. It is often frantic, misguided, and ultimately futile. But action taken from a state of fulfillment, from the calm certainty that your desire is already yours, is powerful beyond measure. This is why I say that changing your concept of self is the most important work you can do. For when you change your concept of self, when you assume a new state of consciousness, everything else changes automatically. Your actions, your decisions, your very way of being in the world shift to align with your new self-concept. Now let us explore some practical tips for personal growth based on this understanding. The first and most crucial step is to become aware of your current mental diet. What thoughts do you habitually entertain? What beliefs do you hold about yourself and the world? Are these thoughts and beliefs serving you or are they limiting you? Most people through life on autopilot unconsciously repeating the same patterns of thought day after day. But you, my dear friends, are not most people. You are here because you seek transformation. And transformation begins with awareness. Start paying attention to your inner dialogue. Notice the running commentary in your mind. Is it supportive and empowering, or is it critical and discouraging? Remember that these thoughts are the seeds you are planting in the garden of your faith. Choose them wisely. Once you become aware of your thought patterns, the next step is to consciously choose new thoughts that align with your desires. But remember, it's not about forcing yourself to think positively. It's about choosing thoughts that feel natural and true to you. If you currently believe that you are unworthy of love, for example, trying to force yourself to believe I am worthy of love might feel inauthentic and create inner resistance. Instead, you might start with a thought that feels more believable such as I am open to the possibility that I am worthy of love. As you consistently focus on this new thought, as you nurture it and give it your attention, it will grow stronger. Eventually, it will become your dominant belief, replacing the old limiting belief. This process of consciously choosing your thoughts is the foundation of personal growth. It is the art of mental gardening, of cultivating the mind to produce the harvest you desire in your life. But thought alone is not enough. To truly transform your life, you must combine thought with feeling. This is where the power of imagination imagination to play. Your imagination is the bridge between thought and feeling. It is the creative power that can make your desires feel real to you before they manifest in the physical world. I urge you to set aside time each day for conscious imagination. Create a mental scene that implies the fulfillment of your desire. Make it as vivid and real as possible. Engage all your senses. Feel the emotions you would feel if your desire were already fulfilled. For instance, if you desire a loving relationship, imagine yourself in a scene where you are with your perfect partner. Feel the warmth of their embrace. Hear their loving words. Experience the joy and contentment of being in a fulfilling relationship. As you practice this imaginal act, you will notice something remarkable the feelings generated by your imagination will begin to spill over into your waking life. You will start to feel more loved, more worthy of love, even before a physical relationship manifests. This is the power of living from the end. By consistently assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled, you are reshaping your consciousness. As your consciousness changes, your reality must change to match it. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Neville, what if negative thoughts and doubts creep in? What if I can't maintain this positive focus all the time? My friends, this is a natural part of the process. 
The key is not to fight against negative thoughts or to berate yourself for having them. Instead, gently redirect your focus back to your desired state. Think of it like training a puppy. When the puppy wanders off, you don't punish it. You gently guide it back to where you want it to be. Treat your mind with the same patience and kindness. When you notice your thoughts straying towards doubt or fear, simply guide them back to your desired state. Remember what you resist persists. Fighting against negative thoughts only gives them more power. Instead, acknowledge them without judgment and then choose to focus on thoughts that serve you better. This brings us to another crucial aspect of personal growth, self-love and self-acceptance. Many people make the mistake of thinking they need to change themselves in order to be worthy of love or success. But the truth is, true transformation comes from a place of self-acceptance, not self-rejection. You are in this moment perfect and united. Yes, you may desire to grow and evolve, but this desire comes from a place of love for yourself, not from a place of lack or unworthiness. When you truly love and accept yourself as you are, you create the fertile soil from which all growth springs. Practice looking at yourself through eyes of love. Speak to yourself with kindness and compassion. Celebrate your strengths and accept your perceived weaknesses with equal grace. For it is only when you fully accept yourself that you give yourself permission to say and change. Now let's talk about the role of gratitude in personal growth. Gratitude is not just a pleasant emotion. It is a powerful creative force. When you focus on what you are grateful for, you are effectively telling the universe, more of this, please. Make gratitude a daily practice. Each morning when you wake up and each night before you go to sleep, take a few moments to count your blessings. Feel the genuine emotion of thankfulness for all that is good in your life. But don't stop at being grateful for what you already have. Practice gratitude for what is coming, for the desires that are in the process of manifesting. Feel thankful for them as if they were already here. This is another way of living from the end, of assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. As you cultivate this attitude of gratitude, you will find that more and more things come into your life for which to be grateful. It becomes a beautiful, self-perpetuating cycle of abundance and joy. Now, my dear friends, I want to address a question that often arises when discussing the law of attraction and the power of focused thought. Some ask if our thoughts create our reality. Are we responsible for everything that happens to us, even the bad things? This is a nuanced question that requires a compassionate understanding. Why is true that our dominant thoughts and beliefs shape our experience? We are not always consciously aware of all our beliefs especially those deeply ingrained in our subconscious mind. Moreover, we are part of a collective consciousness, and sometimes events occur that reflect collective beliefs rather than individual ones. The key is not to blame yourself for undesired circumstances, but to recognize that you always have the power to choose your response to any situation. Instead of asking, why did this happen to me? Ask, what can I learn from this? How can I use this experience for my growth? This shift in perspective transforms challenges into opportunities for evolution and self-discovery. Remember, every experience, whether perceived as positive or negative, is an opportunity to know yourself more deeply and to consciously choose who you want to be. In this way, even seemingly negative experiences can be transmuted into catalysts for personal growth. Now let us delve into the concept of persistence. Personal growth is not always a smooth, linear process. There will be times when you feel as if nothing is changing, when your desired reality seems far away. It is in these moments that persistence becomes crucial. Persistence doesn't mean forcing or struggling. It means maintaining your assumption regardless of appearances. It means continuing to live from the end, even when the outer world hasn't yet caught up with your inner reality. Think of it like planting a seed. Once you plant a seed, you don't dig it up every day to check if it's growing. You trust in the natural process of growth. You continue to water it and provide the right conditions, knowing that due time it will sprout and flourish. Similarly, once you plant the seed of your desire in your consciousness through your imaginal acts, you must have faith in the process. Continue to nurture it with your attention and emotion, but release the anxiety about when or how it will manifest. This release, this letting go is not indifference. 
It is deep trust in the perfect unfolding of your desire. It is the confident expectation of a child on Christmas Eve, knowing that their gifts will be there in the morning. As you persist in your assumption, as you continue to live from the state of your wish fulfilled, you will begin to notice changes. At first, they may be subtle, a shift in your mood, a new idea, an unexpected opportunity. These are signs that your outer world is beginning to conform to your inner state. Celebrate these signs, no matter how small they may seem. Your gratitude and excitement will further amplify the manifestation process. But don't become attached to these specific signs. Keep your focus on the end result, on the complete fulfillment of your desire. Now I want to address a common pitfall in personal growth, the trap of constantly seeking outside yourself for answers or validates. While books, teachers, and techniques can be valuable tools, true transformation always comes from within. You are the operant power in your life. No one else can do your imagining for you. No one else can assume your desired state for you. The power to change your life lies within your own consciousness. This is why I often say go within. All the wisdom of the universe, all the power you need to transform your life is already within you. Your task is not to acquire something new, but to awaken to what you already are. When you go within, when you quiet the chatter of the external world and listen to the voice of your own being, you tap into an infinite source of wisdom and power. This is the essence of meditation and contemplation, not to achieve some special state, but to become aware of your true nature. In this state of inner quietude, you may receive insights for inspirations. Trust these. Act on them. They are your inner guidance leading you towards the fulfillment of your desires. Remember, the outer world is a reflection of your inner state. As you cultivate inner peace, clarity and joy, your outer world will inevitably reflect these qualities back to you. This is why personal growth is the most powerful way to change your life circumstances. Now let us talk about the importance of living in the present moment. Many people postpone their happiness, thinking I'll be happy when I get that job or find that relationship or achieve that goal. But this is a trap, my friends. It keeps you always chasing, never arriving. The secret is to find joy in the present moment, even as you work towards your desires. Remember your point of power is always in the present. It is only in the now that you can choose your thoughts, feel your emotions, and take inspired action. Moreover, when you learn to enjoy the journey, to find satisfaction in the process of growth itself, you open yourself to even greater possibilities. You become detached from specific outcomes, which paradoxically makes those outcomes more likely to manifest. This doesn't mean you abandon your desires or become complacent. It means you trust in the perfect unfolding of your life knowing that every moment is bringing you closer to the full expression of your true self. As we near the end of our discussion, I want to emphasize the importance of taking inspired action. While the inner work imagination and assumption is crucial, it must be paired with outer action for full manifestation. However, this action comes from a different place than conventional goal setting or striving. It comes from a place of alignment with your soon state. When you truly lie from the end, when you fully embody the consciousness of your desire fulfilled, you will be naturally inspired to take the right actions at the right times. These inspired actions often feel effortless, joyless, may not make logical sense to your racial meaning, but they will feel right on a deeper lake. Trust these inspirations. Act on them promptly and decisively. Remember, you are not taking action to make your desire happen. You are taking action because in your assumed reality, this is simply what you naturally do. This subtle shift in perspective makes all the difference. In conclusion, my dear friends, I want to remind you of the immense power you hold within you. You are not a helpless victim of circumstances, but the creator of your reality. Your focus, your imagination, your assumptions shape the world you experience. Choose wisely what you give your attention to. Cultivate thoughts and feelings that align with your desires. Live from the end. Assuming the state of your wish fulfilled, practice gratitude, self-love, and present moment awareness. Take inspired action from a place of alignment and joy.
and above all persist. Persist in your assumption, persist in your faith, persist in your knowledge that what you seek is already yours in consciousness. For remember, consciousness is the only reality and you are that consciousness. You are the operant power in your life. You are the miracle you seek. Embrace this truth, live from this understanding and watch as your life transforms in wonderful and unexpected ways. Go forth now, not as seekers, but as finders, not as hopeful dreamers, but as conscious creators. For you are the power, you are the miracle, you are the divine expression of life itself. Thank you for your attention, my friends. May your journey of personal growth be filled with joy, wonder, and the continual unfolding of your infinite potential. <laughs>